something crazy just happened a new paper also a technique that just came up it's called mem gpt it's treating a large language model like an operating system before we move into the paper let me give you a very quick primer about operating system if you're too old probably you know all this stuff but you are too young you may not know it first of all if you see a operating system computer operating system os os has got two memories one the primary memory the second one is the secondary memory the primary memory is from your ram random access memory a random access memory is usually not very huge. For example, the computer that you might be watching this video on, it could have 16 gigs of memory or 32 gigs of memory, while the storage disk that you have got, maybe it's a 256 hard disk or a 256 gig hard disk or 512 gig hard disk. So what happens inside OS is, OS is const constantly swapping the files from the primary memory and the secondary memory to make sure that the operating system can function properly. And that is exactly what this diagram says. You've got a physical memory, which is the RAM, and then you have got the disk, the external memory, and then it creates a virtual memory based on these two memory. So this has been there like for so many years. That's why we use computers, smartphones, and iPads and all these things. But in the same line, if you were to treat LLMs, what can you do? And that is exactly what these people have done it. It's a paper called MemGPT. It says towards LLMs as operating systems, and some of the authors are uh, here from the Gorilla paper. So if you know Gorilla, Gorilla was a model or, or a system that they created, how you can connect APIs with large language models. And MemGPT has got some of these authors. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to teach LLMs or design a system, design an architecture where the LLMs can manage its memory with different tiers. And you can see from this architecture that the LLM now has got a virtual context. So typically what is a context window? Every LLM is trained on a context window, like a limit, like 4,000 tokens, 8,000 tokens, 2,000 tokens. And that is the in-context memory. The LLM knows only stuff from that particular context. You ask anything beyond that, it doesn't know. Your conversation exceeds that context, it doesn't know. And that's where the concept of retrieval augmented generation, vector DB, and all these things come into play. Now, what they are trying to do is they're trying to use a vector DB. In fact, uh, their solution uses FACE, F-A-I-S-S. It's an open source vector DB solution. But uh, what they are trying to do with that is they're trying to improve the operations in such a way that it is quite seamless. So they're letting the LLM manage its own memory rather than you know just a user doing it. So they've created a virtual context. The virtual context has got the main context and the external context. So the main context is more analogous to the RAM, the random access memory, which is the primary memory of an operating system, while the external context is analogous to the external disk that you have got. So the main memory has got a limited context window, for example, 4,000 tokens or 8,000 tokens, while the external memory would have infinite tokens. I, I, I mean, infinite is a, it's an exaggeration. It's, it's always finite. Nothing is infinite in the world. But anyways, depending upon what kind of storage you have got, it offers you unlimited, unlimited again, unlimited memory. So what they're trying to do here is they have designed the system where they have got this virtual context and uh, it just keeps on swapping between that. So the user sends a message. Once the user sends a message, it goes to the LLM and the LLM manages like the memory in, in itself and it gives back something. Either it sends a message uh, as a response or it goes back and updates its database, like updates its memory in such a way that it learns something about the user. It's a very, very interesting, but also like a crazy idea. I don't know how many of you follow Andre Karpathy. Andre Karpathy recently, or probably a couple of weeks back, came up with a very similar idea, saying that treating LLMs as just simply text generation is almost how people treated computers like calculators. Maybe the more analogous, uh, example would be treating LLMs as an operating system. I think somebody like literally took it very seriously and tried to design, even though this is um, not like a complete OS, this is primarily talking about the memory aspect in itself. So what is happening? LLMs are increasingly used for, uh, let's say, perpetual chat, like long conversations and uh, context windows are uh, limiting the con per per perpetual chat. And that's where the virtual context comes into picture. And not just that this is a paper, you know, some of you might be already skeptical. Hey, hey, anybody can write a paper. It's just like a couple of architectural diagrams. For you, those people, they have also shared the code in itself where you can go create a perpetual chatbot. Like uh, for example, see this demo. Somebody like ran this and the first message, it says, hello, Chad, how has been Dave so far? And um, the person says, my name is Brad, not Chad. And uh, the, the LLM is thinking, 
thinking and it says okay it's going to update the core memory and it says the first name is chad um, not chad and uh, it updates the first name to be brad and it says my apologies and it also sends a message in context saying that um, i'm not sure how i got the chad word from so let's let's start again and it asks you i think this is a very very to be honest like very very interesting um, way to treat llms and this code is available for you to use it all you need is like a gpt4 api key now let's dive deeper into the paper so if you dive deeper into the paper you would know that the, the main contribution for of this paper is they're creating a virtual context management system so this is the system how it looks like so you've got a parser the parser takes anything from the user like this is this is the basically the virtual virtual context management system everything outside is from the user it could be a message document upload system message time or something and uh, the parser takes the input and it has a virtual context the virtual context has main context and also the external context which we already discussed the primary memory and the secondary memory very much like your um, the computer os operating system it has primary memory and the secondary memory and it builds a virtual memory based on it and the same way it has got it then you have got the llm processor the core llm and you have got a parser so the output of parser could be two things one it could be yield or it could be a function whenever it is a yield it just waits for the next call to come and doesn't do anything at all just you know sends a message or something uh, whenever it is a function the function could uh, respond to multiple things one it could be a message send a message back to the user like for example it said um, my name is uh, brad not chat okay now it is a function one it sends a message to the user saying that the person's name is brad not chad at the same time it goes and writes memory back so for example the function could be a message uh, it could be a read memory event it could be a write memory event and it could be like a pausing interrupts let let's look at quick example of how does it look like for example if you look at this uh, it says okay hello chad uh, welcome i'm excited to embark on this journey with you as a phd student of computer science blah 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 and uh, the user says on october 11th on october 11th the user says i took the day off my mom brenda baked me a birthday cake it was my favorite chocolate lava so now what mem gpt know does is mem gpt knows this is an event because somebody has made a birthday cake or, or at least like it assumes that uh, because somebody made a birthday cake and uh, it should be a brad's birthday today or chat sorry chat's birthday today so what mem gpt does is mem gpt actually makes a call it says working context append and we'll we'll quickly see what is working context it is a working context append and it says birthday is 11th october first second is favorite cake is chocolate lava cake made by mom brenda so it updates two information one is the birthday the second one is the favorite cake and then it comes back to the user and it sends a message happy birthday chat nothing like a special treat to the make to make the day sweeter and it goes on and then it gives you the example now what is this working context now you saw that the function call could uh, was one it updated one it sent the user message but what what is this working context so if you see the main context the main context that you just saw here the main context is split into three parts so the main context first is split into a system context system instruction the second one is a conversational context and the third one is a working context so the main context which is the part of the context window the, the basic one or the primary memory is split into three groups one is a system instruction for example you say hey pretend to be a doctor and tell me what is this medicine about this is the system instruction the second one is the conversational context which is like what you use to converse like communicate the third one is a working context which serves as a working memory scratch pad for the agent so this is like in the back of the mind you say in the back of the mind of the agent or the llm in itself so what happened here is it went and updated the working context saying that this is what it is this is what it is so the mem gpt knows for example it has to wish happy birthday and also it says mom's brenda chocolate lava cake so it it knows all these details about now comes in the external context so the external context now has two parts one is a recall storage the second one is an archival storage so the recall storage stores the entire history of events processed by the llm processor if you see everything is an event here everything is an event any anything that goes to the llm is an event and all these events are stored in the external context 
and that external context first first thing is a recall storage it goes into recall storage and then you have got the archival storage which uh, serves as a like a, a normal like a db you know general read write store that the agent can utilize as overflow for in context read write code so during the conversation if the agent has to use some external memory it can go to the archival storage store something get something and then come from there and that is again a very good example that you could see here for example if you go see this 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 particular thing you can see that okay welcome back fancy a chat about horror movies any particular film you have watched and then the user says i don't i usually actually don't like you know horror movies i like i'm into romantic comedy so it goes into the working context and it replaces saying that the user actually likes the horror movies uh, or it replaces i watch horror movies with i like romantic comedies and this is how it keeps on updating the working context and also you know after everything is finished it goes back to the recall storage and stores everything and uh, when something is required like for example uh, there is a question about let's say what's the music that uh, you know you spoke about some time back so it goes into the search so for example the question is what was the artist you mentioned you could get into the user asks so then now the llm knows that there has been a past conversation about uh, some kind of music artist and it goes to the recall storage and starts looking for music it gets all the conversations and it picks that okay the probably the person that we spoke about is taylor swift and it comes back and gives you the answer as taylor swift and this is how this entire llm is designed to work with one the primary memory the second one is the secondary memory or the main context and uh, the the external memory that you have got the external context and within main memory you have got like the three one the system one the working context and also the main the main memory and uh, for uh, for external context the external memory you have got the recall storage and the archival storage i think like this is a very brilliant idea it uh, the code is quite straightforward for you to go look at it if you go into mem gpt you can in fact look at the memory and inside memory you can see you have the core memory and uh, you can see what is happening here you have got the dummy archival memory dummy archival memory with uh, embeddings with face and recall memory you have got all these things like very well written the very well written code and the way they evaluated this um, mem gpt they have also created a new uh, performance evaluation performance that they call deep memory retrieval what we just saw is actually deep memory retrieval task it talk it it knows that they spoke about something it goes to the past it goes to the recall storage and it retrieves it it comes back to you and gives it to you as part of the conversation not necessarily like an answer that typically happens in vector search so they created a benchmark for that and then they figured out that you know mem gpt scores like the best in it the only limitation at this point at least like if you go see the limitation that they have called out is um, while all these things are good like the solution that they have uh, discussed is good the the entire thing is depending upon open ai gpt4 fine tuned on function calls so all these things are happening based on open ai gpt4 fine tuned specifically for function calls and uh, this th this is happening only good with gpt4 even with gpt3.5 they figured out that the model consistently generates incorrect function calls so it doesn't work fine and there is also uh, an issue um, the the creator of this one of the creators of this package has created saying that uh, you know gpt 3.5 turbo is bad at understanding the function set and uh, they want to see how to improve it and it's not just gpt 3.5 is bad uh, they have tried with the llama to 70 billion parameter model which is also not good i don't know why did they not try like code llama with gorilla or something like that but anyways the biggest limitation or the only limitation at this point is it is only gpt4 based so if you have got a gpt4 api definitely you should try out this thing but even even you know whether you try it out or not i think it's a very interesting architectural choice very interesting idea to borrow something that has been happening in classical operating system into the large language model world where one you can create like self perpetual chatbots with like unlimited memory or also self editing memory like for example like i said um, i can just go ahead and then say i like tea and it's it's going to update the memory i like tea so tomorrow i could come and say you know i stopped liking tea i stopped drinking tea so it can go updated it. so it's like a self editing system that you create 
and also you can have like uh, an infinite memory chatbot or a vector search i think it's a very interesting approach kudos to the authors for a very clear paper uh, to be honest like you should definitely read this paper um the title is a bit of uh, you know exaggeration but may maybe maybe it might go in that particular direction of operating system but i definitely enjoyed going through the paper and uh, the code is available for you to try it out if you have got gpt4 access let me know in the comment section what do you think about this interesting direction also think about what andre karpati said like computer calculator is how the world started but computer is not calculated anymore in fact your smartphone is not a phone anymore so do you see llms going into that kind of completely like a revolutionary product just from being a text generation engine let let me know in the comment section see you in another video happy prompting